Welcome, my name is Rasha Alami. Uh, I'm from Imperial College in London. It's a great honour and pleasure to be here at AHA in Chicago in 2024. And I'm joined today by Sebastian Weiberg, who has just presented the results of his trial, Glorious, um, to the late breaking arena. So Sebastian, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Glorious. I know that you're an anaesthetist who has worked with the cardiac surgeons in delivering this trial in Copenhagen. So congratulations. But tell us a little bit about what you did. Thank you very much. Um, well, the GLORIOUS trial was a randomized uh, single center 2x2 factorial design trial, which we conducted at the Heart Center uh, in uh, University Hospital Copenhagen, uh, Rigshospitalet in, uh, in Denmark. We conducted the trial from 2016, uh, 2015 sorry, to 2021, um, and we enrolled uh, adult patients undergoing uh, cardiopulmonary bypass assisted uh, heart surgery, specifically coronary artery bypass grafting and or aortic valve replacements uh, in a 2x2 factorial design to either the uh, DLP1 agonist uh, exanatide versus placebo or uh, an FiO2 uh, fraction of uh, oxygen delivered during cardiopulmonary bypass of 50% versus 100% uh, during CPB and, uh, and weaning thereof. And what we did was we followed the, followed the patients for a median follow-up period of uh, 5.9 years uh, and we did not see any significant differences in a composite uh, endpoint of death, renal failure requiring di dialysis, stroke or new onset of worsening heart failure. So the results were neutral for both uh, interventions. Okay, so thank you very much for sort of putting that into the results there for us. But can you put it into context for me, who's an interventional cardiologist? What would be the normal practice in terms of FiO2 yes. within surgery and post? And, and what would you normally mm. do in terms of GLP-1 agonists? Well, I think that's, a, that's, that's the key question, I guess. Um, and I think we're in a situation where we actually know very little about how, uh, how to do specific uh, targets uh, during cardiopulmonary bypass. And for instance, the contemporary guidelines from the uh, European associations uh, for the conduct of uh, cardiopulmonary bypass during cardiac surgery, out of 113 recommendations, only seven of them are based on, uh, on uh, high level of evidence. So we actually have a lot of uh, normal day uh, decisions to make uh, where we don't really have strong evidence for, for, for what to do. And I think the uh, oxygenation arm of this trial was sort of uh, trying to test one of those everyday decisions. Because uh, every single day we have to, to pick whether we do FiO2 of 50% or 60 or 80 or 100. Um, so this was a, was a, a try to, uh, to answer this question a little bit more thoroughly. Um, then in addition to that, we chose to uh, com uh, combine it with a more exploratory uh, intervention, the GLP-1 agonist, uh, realizing that, uh, that the a priori likelihood of, uh, of uh, achieving a significant effect is, is low when you test uh, a new drug uh, in a new group of patients. Um, uh, so we, we're trying to conduct studies where we sort of uh, combine those more day-to-day -day decisions with uh, a single exploratory intervention, uh, see if, it, if we can change something uh, for the patients. Yeah, so on that day-to-day -day conversation around oxygenation, what are you going to do now? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I, but I think uh, the neutral results of the trial, uh, in a fairly broad uh, range of oxygenation targets, there's a large difference from uh, 50 to 100, obviously, as could also be seen in the, uh, in the partial pressure of uh, arterial oxygen content in the, in the population. Uh, and I think this, this data actually ensures us that we can basically do what we think within that range. Meaning that if we're, we are very worried about oxygen de delivery in an acutely sick patient, uh, with potentially low bypass flow, uh, hemodynamically unstable, uh, previous stroke, um, with a lot of uh, risk factors, uh, it could be reasonable or rational to increase the oxygenation targets. Uh, but on the other hand, we can also uh, actually go fairly low and, 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 and use lower targets uh, for the majority of the population usually. And now can I speak to the GLP-1 story? Yes. So obviously they are the wonder drug, something that should work everywhere, and I've, I've yet to see a negative trial until today. Can I ask you about this compound that you use? Because obviously it's not yes. semaglutide that we're used to. No. I understand you designed the trial some years ago, and that's yes. you know, part of what happens as we design trials. Would you do it differently now? Uh, I, I think we would. Uh, back in 2014, so 10 years ago when we designed the trial, we had uh, fairly convincing uh, data that, uh, that the GLP-1 an 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 agonist um, exanatide 
uh, would be safe in a population of critical ill patients, which was obviously important uh, for us to try it in, uh, in cardiac surgery patients. Uh, further, we had uh, some results suggesting that uh, we could reduce final infarct size in a subgroup of patients with the ST elevation myocardial infarction. Uh, so that's the rationale by, uh, behind tr choosing the exanatide uh, as the DLP1 analog. But uh, I definitely also agree with you that, uh, that many things has happened with the DLP1 agonists uh, since, and we would probably, uh, probably use a, a more longer acting uh, DLP1 agonist if we had to do it again. Thank you so much. Look, these trials are impossible to do. You recruited so many patients within a single centre, you know, in a surgical population who we know are very hard uh, traditionally to recruit into trials. So we want to congratulate you for bringing us this data and, and getting this trial to the end so that we have some answers to some of our questions. Thank you for joining me today, Sebastian. Thank you very much to the audience and uh, feel free to stay tuned to AHA TV for more that's to come.